Hello again. Gaze into a mirror and what do you see? Well, I see my face, of course, but in my face I see moods, I see shifts of feeling. We humans are really good at reading faces and bodies because if I can look at you and feel what you're feeling, I can learn from you, connect to you, I can love you. Empathy is one of our finer traits, and when it happens, it happens so easily, perhaps because, and this is brand new science, this is just out of the lab, we may have some special circuitry in our brains that helps us whenever we look at each other. Ask yourself, why do people get so involved, so deeply, deeply involved with such anguish, such pain, such nail-biting tension over football. Cleveland Browns are gambling on defense. Why are we such suckers for sports? And it's not just sports. We can lose it completely at the movies, at video games, watching a dance. Is there something about humans, humans particularly, that allows us to connect so deeply when we watch other people? Watch them moving, watch them playing, watch their faces. Well, as it happens, scientists have an explanation for this strange ability to connect. It's new. It had never been found on the cellular level before. A set of brain cells found on either side of the head. Among all the billions of long, branching cells in our brain, these so-called mirror neurons have surprising power. What we found is the mechanism that underlies something which is absolutely fundamental to the way that we see other people in the world. And it began entirely by accident at a laboratory in the lovely old city of Parma, Italy, where a group of brain researchers was working with monkeys. And they were testing a neuron, that's a brain cell, that always fired, made this sound, yeah, whenever the monkey would grab for a peanut. So the lab had all these peanuts around, and whenever the monkey made its move, the neuron would fire. Scientists thought, now here's a neuron that is essential to motion. It's a motor neuron. Then one day, the monkey was just sitting around, not moving at all, just sitting, when a human scientist came into the lab, and when that scientist grasped the peanut, yeah, the monkey's cell fired. Now, the monkey hadn't moved. It was the human that had moved, suggesting that this neuron up here couldn't tell the difference between seeing something and doing something. Seeing and doing were the same. Or more intriguingly, that for this neuron, watching somebody do something is just like doing it yourself. The head of the lab, Giacomo Rizzolatti, thought, wow. The same neurons, one neuron, fire both when the monkey observes something and when the monkey is doing something. It's almost unbelievable. It was surprising because this cell which was involved with motor planning for the monkey turned out to be interested in the movements of other people as well. Some people call them monkey-see, monkey-do neurons, but the name that stuck is mirror neurons because with them, the brain seems to mirror the movements it sees. This accidental discovery got scientists thinking, doing more tests, and it soon came pretty clear that this is not just a monkey thing. It's a people thing, too. We all know that humans learn by looking and copying. That's what infants do. First you look, then you do. Ready? Let's see your feet this way. And once you've watched and copied and learned a set of moves, you not only have them in your head, you put your shoe on. If you see somebody else doing it, you can share the experience. And I want to do it with me. They know the moves, you know the moves, so you can move with them. Wow. If you can use the years of training that you yourself have done, learning to crawl, then learning to walk, then learning to eat, this is an incredibly rich set of knowledge that you could apply to the problem of actually seeing what's going on. So that's why when I head down this street carrying all these packages, not only do people watch, look how they're watching. They feel my predicament. Because they know what it's like to carry heavy packages. They all know about carrying. So as they watch me moving, they can feel themselves moving. 
their neurons are mirroring the action. These neurons may be the brain's way of translating what we see so we can relate to the world. The mirror system is the way that you tap into, the way that you harness your own abilities and project them out into the world. And people are really good at watching and translating what we see. Like with just 13 moving dots, that's all there are here, you'll have no trouble recognizing these uh, very ordinary activities. What's more, tests have shown when a person sees a movie like this of his own movement, he'll recognize it immediately as his own. And that's why sports fans tense with the action and wince and leap. Because if you know the game, then your neurons are firing as if it's you playing, giving a whole new meaning to the phrase armchair quarterback. That's why it's so easy to be a sports fan. But there is more, suggests UCLA professor Marco Iacoboni. He thinks mirror neurons tie us not just to other people's actions, but to other people's feelings. So the idea was to try to figure out how the emotional system and this motor system are connected together. We're going to go in the scanner. What you're going to do is to wear... To demonstrate, he put me into this very powerful fMRI brain scanner that can peer into the brain while it's working. And he gave me some goggles so he could show me pictures when I was in there. So you can see here the eyeball of Robert. And once he had a good view into my brain... Nice looking brain. Thank you. Robert, you're not supposed to talk when we scan you, all right? Sorry. Then he said, okay, I'm going to show you a bunch of faces. And for each face, I want you to imitate it. So I did that. Then he recorded my brain while I moved my facial muscles. We're going to do right away another one. Okay. Then he said, okay, same faces, but this time, don't move a muscle. Just look. So I looked. When we checked the results... Oh, there's my brain. I've never seen my brain before. This is your mirror area. Jacoboni says that the part of my brain that's working when I make a face, the same part gets busy when I see the face. Plus, when I was looking at these faces, I remember feeling extra uncomfortable, kind of bad. But when these faces came on, I felt, I don't know, I felt better, almost happy. And in fact, at the moment I was looking at the happy face, my brain, and this is my brain, in that instant, see the red area here? It shows activity in the happy, emotional part of my brain. And when I was imitating happy faces, look, I get even a bigger response. This, says Jacoboni, is a consistent result. Mirror neurons, he believes, can send messages to the limbic or emotional system in our brains. So it's possible these neurons help us tune in to each other's feelings. That's empathy. We strongly believe that that's a unifying mechanism that allows people to actually connect at a very simple level. You're saying that there's a place in my brain which, whose job it is to live in other people's minds, live in other people's bodies. That's right. Oh, darling, I'm going to die. Don't let me die. Yeah. And great actors instinctively know that if they put feeling and drama into their bodies... Hold me tight. Don't let me go. ...their faces... It's dark out there alone. ...we will respond. You can't die. You're too brave to die. What actors are expert in is using their movements to inspire feelings in the people watching. These are the experts in the mirror system. We are intensely social creatures. We literally read other people's minds. I don't mean anything psychic like telepathy, but you can adopt another person's point of view. When you put it together, what do you think it's going to be? So if mirror neurons help us connect emotionally, what about people who have trouble with this? Kids like Christian, who has autism. Why do you like Legos? It's been known for some time that children with autism could be quite intelligent, but have a profound deficit 
in social interaction. There he is. Christian can speak and read and write, but like many kids with autism, he will avoid eye contact. He often misunderstands questions. So Christian, can you tell me what you did in school today? Doing well. You're doing well? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to know what exactly causes this. So Dr. Ramachandran and his graduate student, Lindsay Schenk, designed an experiment. So we're going to be reading your brain waves with this cap. They recorded brain waves while the kids opened and closed their hands, and while they looked at a movie of somebody else's hands. For most people, the brain waves look the same either way, whether they're doing or seeing. But for kids with autism, the wave changes suggesting possibly that autism may have something to do with broken mirror neurons. Their brains may indeed be different in that regard, and they may have deficits in the mirror neuron system. But we don't know this for sure yet, and there needs to be additional work needs to be done using brain imaging. But what we do know, says Ramachandran, is that healthy human beings are intensely social. More than our cousins the monkeys, we invent ways to connect. We invent dances, and handshakes, and games to play. We eat together, we meet, and we talk. We talk a lot. Everybody's interested in this question. What makes humans unique? What makes us different from the great apes, for example? You can say humor, you are the laughing biped. Language, certainly, okay? But another thing is culture. And a lot of culture comes from imitation, watching your teachers do something. And here, V.S. Ramachandran makes a big leap. He has proposed that at a key moment in our evolution, this is his guess, our mirror neurons got better. And that made all the difference, he says, because once we humans got better at learning from each other, looking, copying, teaching, we could do things the other creatures couldn't. In other words, if you are a bear and suddenly you are, the environment turns cold, you need a few million years to develop a polar bear type layers of fat and fur. It would take many, many, many bear generations to select for furrier bears. But, says Ramachandran, if you're a human, you watch your father slaying another bear and putting on a fur coat, you know, skinning it, using that as a coat, you watch it you learn it instantly. Your mirror neurons start firing away in your brain. And you perform the same sequence, complicated sequence. Instead of going through millions of years of evolution, you've done it in one generation. And while no one's claiming that mirror neurons are the key ingredient that makes us different from other creatures, what these neurons do suggest about us seems almost self-evident. You can see it any Sunday at a sports bar that deep in our architecture, down in our cells, we are built to be together. There would be very little point in having a mirror system if you lived on your own. There'd be a lot of point in having a digestive system if you lived on your own. There'd be a good point in having a movement system if you lived on your own. There'd be a good point in having a visual system if you lived on your own. But there'd be no point in having a mirror system. The mirror system is the most basic social brain system. It's a brain system which there's no point in having if you don't want to interact or relate to other people. But we do like to interact, and maybe now, as never before, we will understand why. <laughs>